Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one I'm going to be showing you Cinemachine, which is an add-on made by Unity themselves. And it's used for doing camera tricks, making cinematics, and just everything camera related. It's, it's all about cameras. And obviously cameras had a big impact to your game, because if you didn't have a camera then you wouldn't render a scene, there would be no game. So you're always looking through the point of a camera. Um, so it's quite important that you get things right. Now, you know, normally you'll just use the built-in main camera and that'll do everything. But at some point you might want to use other uh, camera functionality and other ways of cameras working and it might add a big effect to your game. Uh, it might make everything look much better. Now you still have a main camera, don't worry, that's, that's what gets rendered, but the uh, other, the Cinemachine cameras uh, add different ways of movement and also just different ways of tracking. Now, obviously I already have it imported because I didn't want to sit here downloading it while you were um, watching. It only takes like you know, half a minute, maybe 20 seconds, 10, I don't know, it depends on your internet. So to install it, you go Window, Package Manager, you might have a shortcut, that I don't know. Um, then you go to All and you find it on the list, so Cinemachine is there. And then, you know, get whatever else you want anyway. Um, you don't really need anything to follow this along. Um, you might have your own scene, but I'd recommend not messing up your own scene in cameras right now. You'd probably want to test it out in a, another scene or something or another project. So all I have is a green floor and then, you know, a cube and a capsule. Um, yeah, this looks like an optical illusion. It looks like the cube's bigger. I don't know, just a camera angles. But anyway, it's all about cameras. Um, so we have the main camera, just normal main camera. Don't delete that or anything. Now... There's different kinds of Cinemachine cameras. Once you've got it in, installed and imported, you have all these kinds. Now, I have not used every single kind, but I've used a few of them. And I'll show you the few that I've used and that are the most useful. Um, so first of all, the virtual camera is just like a normal camera, but it has extra settings on it. So if we create a virtual camera, why are we under the ground? Well, it's because it's created the virtual camera at whatever position. So, you know, wherever it was. Now, the virtual camera overrides the main camera in terms of what it sees. So if I position myself here and I click uh, this VCam one that it made, if I align it, so game object align with view, that's the one we see when we're getting rendered. Um, now, obviously, you can change settings on this. Now, if you go look at the main camera, we have a new component on here called Cinemachine Brain, which is the brain of the Cinemachine cameras, I don't know. Um, and as you see, it has it stores a live camera, which is the v, uh, CM. Uh, vcam one obviously you should probably rename that and that means that if we add a second one then whichever one is selected will be here um and there's other things you can tweak here but you don't really want to change the other stuff uh, at least not at the moment um and i'm going to actually just move it again so line with you now one thing you'll notice is the main camera wherever it is in your scene so it's here. It's actually at the same place as the virtual camera, and you can't, you physically can't move its constraints. It is locked to the same as the VC, uh, the VCam. So whatever effect the virtual camera does, the main camera follows it. So it's quite a nice way of basically adding effects to the main camera by doing it on this. Because uh, obviously this isn't a camera, it's a virtual camera. So it's got its own settings on the right, as you see. And if you didn't change any of these, it'd basically act as a normal camera as far as I'm aware. Um, but we can add other things like damping and um, following and stuff like that. So one of the most useful things is, let's say you had a game maybe where at one point you switch to a viewpoint through a camera or through someone else, uh, and that thing could be moving or it could be static. Now let's say it's static, like it's a, it's a spy camera or something. Let's say you have a room and it's got one of those um, security boards with like loads of monitors watching different parts. You could have these um, cameras everywhere, or you can have it like this. So on the follow and look at transforms, let's make the look at transform be the player. There we go. Now, as you see, the rotation updated on its own because how it works now is the rotation of this camera is completely dependent on the position of the player. If we move the player, it rotates so that the center of um, the center of the camera's view is the player. So if I go look at the VC cam and click on game, you actually see what it's doing. So here's the screen basically, and these boxes you can change. Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Um, the yellow little dot is where it's looking at. And since that is locked to the center, it means that wherever the center of the player is or whatever transform it's got on the right, it will have that in the center of the screen no matter what. Regardless of how fast it moves or anything, it's gonna it's gonna have it there. So if we click on like player and we grab the X and we zip it along, like it, it will always be in the center no matter what. Now, that's kind of like how a default camera works. It just looks forwards and you know it will always look forwards if you rotate the object, yeah. 
but how this works is if we we're looking at the player let's say we want it to follow the player but smoothly we don't want it to just you know lock to them we want it to kind of drag behind a bit you can add what's called a dead zone and damping so by default the uh, dead zone width and height is zero now as you see if you tweak that it adds these lines and they make up a little box in the center and what this box means is um, oh, let's not change that just yet. So this box in the middle of the Z dead zone means that while this yellow dot is inside this dead zone, the camera will not rotate. But as soon as that yellow uh, dot gets to the edge of this, it will start uh, rotating to fit the player in. So if we press play now, we've got this little dead zone here. If we take the player, I don't have any movement script, but if we take the player and move him, as you see, it doesn't doesn't move. But as we start to get out of like the box, if we go back onto here, as we try and get out, you'll see, let's like actually lock this, get the player, um, and what I'll do is I'll undock this. So, as you see right now, as the um, player moves in this area, everything is absolutely fine, but as soon as it gets to the edge, everything tries to update. Now, how it works is, the middle box means it can move freely. The blue box is where it actually rotates to try and get to the player, but it's it, the, the yellow line is allowed to be in this blue box, but the further it is to the edge of the blue box, the faster it rotates. And then the red box is a no-go zone. It basically means if the yellow dot is over here, we just instantly rotate this. If you, you physically can't get out of that into the red box, you can't get out of the blue one. Now, you can affect, uh, you can control damping. So if we, um, you see here, there's dead zone. Now that, that dead zone is the only thing you visually see change on here as far as I'm aware. But if you change, um, obviously that's just positioning. So as, I, as you see, if I change the... Uh, view of that it actually does push the camera rotation so that the yellow dot is always inside um, So that's useful now soft zone as I said is the zone where it it rotates, but it doesn't force you to um, Move now if we actually Like put that really low And then we put the uh, dead zone up a bit as you see when I um, Get out of it it kind of updates really quickly because I can't get out of that you know I can't get out of that soft zone um, so if you had the soft zone as like the full thing, that means that even when it gets out, you know, it, it can still get to the other side. But yeah, it, it's all about tweaking. This is all about tweaking. I can't tell you, you know, this is the best setting, whatever. Um, it's just a really useful thing. Now, let's just put that back to a sensible amount. So it's a, you know, about there. Um, if you add damping, that means that um, when it gets out of this zone, it's basically how long does it take before it uh, gets you back into the back into the little uh, dead zone. So if I put this up to like seven or something, now when I move it outside the thing, it actually it rotates there. And it, the longer, the further I'm out, the faster it rotates. But as you see, as it gets closer and closer, it slows down. And it just means like if I go back to the um, game view and I go onto the player. Let's just uh, unlock the VC cam now. If I go back to the player, now as you see, I can move here and it's, it's a lot smoother. Even when I move over here, it like smoothly uh, goes to it now. Um, even then, it's not the smoothest thing right now. That's because I'm manually dragging. Like this would be a lot smoother if I had a move script. But as you see, it works. And as I go under, it flips now. You might not want that, but um, you get the point. It smoothly makes the... Um, player being the thing so the, the player is always uh where is it is always in that in this blue box but it tries to always rotate so that it's in the middle box so this is all about you uh tweaking with settings to get the camera look that you want but this is this is such a useful camera script to use um so i'd very recommend i'd recommend highly using the virtual camera now let's say in your scene you got the camera there let's say i want uh one here i want a virtual camera and I want it, um, let's say, here. Um, so let's uh, align with you. So this is our second camera. Now, if you look on the main camera, it says it's currently looking at VC Cam 2. Now, if I click on VC Cam 1 and press Solo, it actually changes to that. So how Solo works is, you know, it means that this is the current one that's being used. Um, you can also do this with priority so that it always looks the one with the highest priority. Um, now with the second one, let's make it so instead of rotating uh, to look at, it follows the player. Now when you do this, it might move to be a little bit, bit weird position. Yeah. So 
as you see, the VC Cam 2 is now in the ground facing there. But it following, it's following the player. So as we move the player, now it's already got some damping on it. But as you see, it follows the player's movement. So what you want to do is you want to take this and you want to... Um, you might want to even add a lookout on this, to be honest. Let's No, let's not add a lookout. Let's just fix its rotation so it's flat on. Now if we take the player and we move its X, it does the same kind of thing with the damping where I can move. It's got no dead zone right now. The dead zone is like, it's straight in the middle. So as I move, it follows. But as you see, it kind of smoothly follows. Um, now if I've got this active, if I lock... Um, how should I do this? I'll, I'll unparent this again. So if I go to the VC cam one, if I press solo, um, it instantly like goes to it. Um, but when you actually normally change between them, uh, it should. Yeah. So when you change between them um, in the normal way, it smoothly changes between them. So I think 10 is the point where it goes between the priorities. So as you see, it smoothly goes between the two cameras, which is really nice. Uh, it's like a transition between them. So this camera obviously is the one that's looking at the player and when they move, it does that. And then we say, um, now let's go bring this up to 11. Wait, was it this one? Sorry, this bring this one up to 12. Then it changes to this one, which just rotates to face the player. So you can very easily in this, in code change priorities to change which camera is being used, or you can. Uh, I feel like if you change the solo thing, it, it doesn't do the transition; it just changes it, which doesn't look as nice. Um, but yeah, with the with this, uh, there's no aim for the follow, but there's a body which is to do with offset and damping. So if you change the damping up here to be massive, it means that when the player moves, it takes ages for it to. Um, actually rotate and also it rotates a lot smoother so that's that's a lot nicer if you want a smooth look but anyway as i said this tutorial is just showing you the what does what and it's up to you to tweak the settings to get it to work well for you and look good in your game uh, but i assure you just using this in your game anyway will make it look much better and i hope it does um let's delete these virtual cameras now we're going to try some other cameras so if we go to cinema machine uh there are a few more now i'll show you the dolly track one i guess um I don't really know which it wants to show. Uh, free look is quite interesting. Um, so I haven't actually used everything on here before. How about I don't do that one and I do the one I actually know. So if I go to the dolly camera of track, it's quite interesting. So let's put the uh, thingy back. So scene view. This is used for making cinematics. I mean, it's not limited to that, but it's, it's best for that in my opinion. So as you see here, we have a... Um, a camera and then a track. Now where is the track? There is the track, it's in the ground. So if we bring that all up. Oops. Okay, so we've got a track, which is quite literally like a train track, um, and it's got waypoints. So if we click add, you see we get a second part. And when we click add, we get a third part. Now this uh, bends, so if we add a third, the next part, and we can like curve it around. Now, what this does is it basically makes the camera follow. Um, let me just make a track quickly. So we'll add a bit more, and then we'll say, you know, come over here, and we'll add one more. We'll wrap it around here, for example. Now, what we can say is for this uh, camera that is linked with the track. Um, which is just a virtual camera, but it's uh, linked with a dolly track. We can tell it to um, look at player. Now you don't want to do move because it follows the track. Now, if we um, go to the dolly track, I'm trying to think, is there a play button in here? I, when I used to use this, I, I, there's a new version, so it's not the same as when I used it. Um, we're actually in play mode right now, so. what we'll do is we'll go to the camera. Now, as you see on here, we're at path position. So if we tweak this path position, it actually does follow along the um, the path. So 
it's hard. Wait, let me just see here. So currently, it's got an actually it's actually gone offset. I'll fix that um, from the path. But as you see, it actually does follow the path. Um, looks a bit silly when it does it at the moment. So let's just set it to zero. Um, there we go. So now. As we do this, we actually follow along that path. Now, all you'll want to do is you'll want to set this um, path position uh, smoothly increasing. You can do it in an animator. You can do it in the animator um, to uh, smoothly get from one bit to the other. And as you see, so where's our thing? We're currently looking at the player all the time. Now, this track is not the smoothest track. It's not the nicest. Um, Why not? We'll leave it as that. So if we watch now, when I um, go to the VC cam, it's right there. Ignore that transform. That's just um, that's the offset, and we don't want to tweak the offset. Um, well, what you can actually do is you can put that position to the start of the track if you wanted to, just to make it a bit nicer. And then you can um, reset whatever you want to do. You set this to zero when you start. And then, as you move along path position, the camera, while rotating, actually follows along the track. Obviously, it can't go off the end. And it's up to you how fast it actually transitions. Um, and obviously, yeah, you can add damping as well. Um, damping is not necessary, well, is not advised if you're actually wanting it to follow the um, track properly. But if you want it to like smoothly do the track, then you know it's much better to do it this way. It looks a lot nicer actually. Um, so this is the start position, and maybe you want it to like do this, and it's damp. Uh, it's got damping, and it just looks much better. And same with the aim, you can um, do the thing that we did earlier, where you add a dead zone, and ignore the damping. Uh, ig no, ignore. Uh, increase the damping. Let's say we turn off all damping now on the path. It still damps to the player's position, but the problem is, um, it just looks a bit silly to be honest. Uh, on this, I think, in my opinion, you should actually just have damping on this. And probably no damping on here. Oh, that's not the damping. Oops. Um, dead zone. I'd say have the dead zone on them, but then have the track damping. I think that looks better. Um, I'm not sure how good that actually looks while the player's moving at the same time. Also, it all depends on how fast you move the track position, but I think it just looks really nice. Like You can do so many cool camera effects with this, and I hope the people that watch this video, you guys, uh, do go away and try this in some way to implement it in your game because it's it's a good tool and obviously it's in the package manager but some people don't even know about it so I thought it'd be a good idea to make a video on this and those are the two like main cameras that you're going to use and the, the most important and the best ones um, there are plenty more that I haven't actually used that much so I thought I'd only do a tutorial on the ones that I do know about um, so if you do want more tutorials in Cinemachine I'll be sure to go back uh, go away and learn the other uh, features the other cameras but I hope this video, it's, it's gotten long enough anyway, so I hope uh, this helped you. And I um, obviously, quick rundown, you go to uh, Window, Package Manager, Cinder Machine, then you create your cameras from here and you set it all up like I did in the video. So I hope this helps. I hope you like the video. If you do, then obviously leave a like and subscribe. It would mean a lot. Uh, join our Discord server if you haven't already. Um, but apart from that, thanks for watching and goodbye.